Along the way, the service authority incorporated several smaller systems in the county to provide those citizens with more reliable and affordable service. One such water system the authority assumed management of served those who lived on Bull Run Mountain in western Prince William. When the system was acquired from a smaller utility that had been operating it, Bull Run's infrastructure was in serious disrepair. We went in and uh, took over operation of the system, including the asset side, and uh, installed meters initially was the first thing that we did. And once we did that, uh, we realized that the, the system, which had been on a flat rate basis, was full of leaks uh, from the street into the houses. Uh, and we were able to, uh, to, as a result of putting meters in, to force the homeowners to fix those leaks. And once we took over the system, they stopped running out of water because our staff went in, our crews went in, and they discovered, among other things, besides not having any meters, so there was any incentive to be careful the amount of water they used, there were leaks in almost every place. People didn't have a dependable source of water up there. They were running out of water. Of course, they turned to the Board of Supervisors, and the Board of Supervisors turned to us. And we always look at it in a financial way. You know, it's not going to pay for itself. We're not gonna, we can't take money from our existing ratepayers to bail somebody else out. We've never done it. The Service Authority's H.L. Mooney Water Reclamation Facility, like many other wastewater treatment plants, has had to quickly adapt to more demanding regulations for the treated water it releases back into our waterways. The Authority takes stewardship of our environment, especially the Chesapeake Bay and its watershed, very seriously. Between 2003 and 2004, the facility underwent another upgrade this time to voluntarily decrease the amount of nitrogen, which is a nutrient discharged from the plant. That reduction dropped the nitrogen discharge from 20 milligrams per liter down to eight. Nutrients contribute to plant growth, just as if you would put nutrients on your lawn to grow, to grow plants. And they do likewise in the bay, and algae grows. As algae grows and you get uh, tremendous algae blooms, you have a, a green sheen, almost looks like somebody spilled uh, green paint across the water and then that algae dies as that algae dies it consumes oxygen as it consumes oxygen and this causes fish to die and re remove some of the vegetation the grasses for little fish to hide and it causes an unhealthy environment. I think the service authority sensed that it was going to ultimately become mandatory so we took advantage of a grants program where we got roughly nine million dollars out of 42 million dollars as grant money from the Department of Environmental Quality and the rest we, was financed through the through Department of Environmental Quality and the Virginia Resource Authority with low interest loans. Every time we turn around it seems there's a new there's a new requirement so we have to go back and and make changes so that we're polluting less so we're causing less damage to the Chesapeake Bay which is the eventual what the goal is is to stop polluting the bay. The service authority began another upgrade of the Mooney facility in fall 2007. The estimated $150 million project will expand the plant's treatment capacity from 18 million gallons per day to 24. The upgrade will also bring effluent nitrogen levels down from 8 milligrams per liter to 3. We had to remove nitrogen down to 8 milligrams per liter, so the expansion that we're going through now uh, had that nitrogen removal going down to LOT, which is limit of technology, which is maximum that you can get practically. We are now going ahead up to the 24 because we have another deadline to meet after which we won't be able to do it so easily. But um, I think maybe in retrospect, it, this wasn't all bad because, the, or again, the requirements have changed so much we probably would have had to have gone back and retrofitted the whole plant for, for the pollution controls we need to have now. The service authority's customer base has grown from roughly 25,000 customers in 1983 to more than 75,000 accounts today. That means more water, more infrastructure, and more wastewater treatment capacity than the authority has ever needed before. Well, the authority has always excelled at planning for the future, and the journey that has provided our customers 25 years of excellent service is far from over. Current General Manager Dean Dickey and Deputy General Manager Leslie Griffith are helping to keep the organization focused on its daily mission of providing clean water and quality service to customers and the community. The nature of this business is changing and it's changing dramatically. It's changing daily. We have increased environmental oversight, environmental regulations, 
and uh, environmental awareness. This is becoming much more of an environmental company. We have competition globally now. We need to compete for resources that impact the resources that we use, the chemicals, the steel, the construction material. We have a changing workforce. The folks that brought us here these past 25 years are now beginning to retire. So we have the challenge of being able to capture the knowledge that they have, but also of looking forward to see how we can uh, bring the new generations in to, to serve our customers. And then finally, we have the challenge of cost. All of these things that I talk about tend to increase the cost of doing business. So we need to look at, at having systems where we can deal with all the complex issues that we have to help the service authority become more efficient and more effective in order to provide good quality service to our customers. So by uh, 2005, we were again in need of water capacity and uh, Fairfax Water was again willing to sell, sell its additional capacity. Uh, they were doing another expansion of the Corbulus plant, which takes water out of the Potomac River, and that enabled us to buy another 12 million gallons of capacity. In the last nine or ten years, we've more than doubled the uh, total lineal feed of water lines and sewer lines we've had. We've added any number of new uh, sewage pumping stations and water booster stations, probably added six to nine new uh, water storage tanks. But So it's been a, a challenge to engineering to keep up with, with the demands of growth. I think the tremendous advantage that the service already had, in, in addition to some great employees, was, was we always had a board of directors that were, were looking out for the customers that they were represented and, and handled us as a business. The first uh, five members and then eight, uh, we've always tried to tell the staff that, you know, you, know, you work for the service authority and we, we want to be proud of you and you want you to do good work. And, be nice to the customers, that's why you named it the Service Authority. And uh, I think we've always had a, a good group of people working here, top management, middle management, I think it's, and even people in the field. We've been able to, to, to go through a, a, a growth process uh, from, uh, from, from the early 80s, uh, you know, through the, through the present time, uh, largely because we, we keep people. Uh, people tend to stay with this organization. It's the, type, it's the type of organization where you get up and you enjoy coming in here. You enjoy who you work for. Uh, you enjoy uh, what you do. I think that, that, that we kind of foster uh, uh, education. I think that's important for, for a young guy or so that wants to go ahead and grow. That opportunity's here. I think that's, that's good. And. Um, and I think there's people. I think there's people that will support programs for, for learning and advancement if people apply themselves. The staff has always been well out in front of the need, the, the immediate need, in terms of, of looking ahead and uh, anticipating what future requirements are going to be. We all have to use water and sewer, and it's kind of interesting to see where the whole process and where it comes from and to understand you know what you are really paying for. It's not a simple delivery system uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's vital to the interests of, uh, of the community. I think the community needs to know what we're doing. It's just like the people in the housing development they need to know what we're doing and everything that we're trying to do for the community. I'm really proud that we are where we are and how we've grown and everyone has growing pains when you increase the size of your organization for whatever reason and obviously our customer base has increased so we need to increase the people who take care of our customers and along with that I mean it's facilities and not only the people but it's I think we've done it well. What the men and women of the Service Authority have done these past 25 years they've done very well and will continue to do our job well. We'll continue to be good stewards of the environment and we'll continue to provide our customers clean water, quality service, while always striving to be the best. We hope you've enjoyed this special 25th anniversary edition of The Pipeline. I'm Keenan Howell. And I'm Melissa Hopkins, reminding you to visit us on the web at www.pwcsa.org to learn about the many ways we serve you every day.